grace and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Savior Jesus. Amen. Today I'd, I'd like to especially zero in on the gospel lesson, uh, even though I want to refer to the epistle too. But we're just after Easter here, we're in the Easter season. And I think today we'll look at it under the theme, Seeing, seeing at, and Believing at Easter Time. The people that were, we met in the scriptures last week who were witnessing the resurrection of Jesus, and the people who are in John, listed here in John chapter 20, all had their own unique experience at Easter. And let's we'll review that a little bit. But today we'll talk about the nature of of our believing, the experience, the experience of faith, and uh, what what that kind of means as we look at Thomas too. But before we get to Thomas, I'd like to just do a little review with you of chapter 20 here in John. You know, the there are people here that we meet who experienced the empty tomb and the resurrection, and and how how they kind of respond to it or deal with it. Early in chapter 20, we meet uh, Mary, Mary, who's going to do Mary Magdalene, and she goes to the tomb and she finds the stone rolled away. And she's perplexed, not sure what to think of it all. She runs back to the other, where the disciples are, and uh, she uh, tells them. But later on, about 10 verses later, Mary's back at the tomb, and we see her there crying. Then there are two angels there, and, and then there's one whom she thinks is the gardener, but if you remember how the account goes, it's not the gardener, it's the risen Lord, now raised from the dead. And uh, he says to her, Mary, here she is in her grief, and then it says in the scripture that she holds on to Jesus, and not just grabs him, not just touches him, but she embraces him and holds on to the point where he has to say, now you gotta let go now, <laughs> for now. And the point I'm making here is here's the experience of Mary, who's heartbroken, sad, she's crying, and the crying is, a, the Greek is kind of a sense of, a, 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 you know, a serious crying, not just a little weeping. And here she uh, gets the reassurance of seeing Jesus and the value to her in her faith of touch, of touch, of kind of that, that sort of a feel and touch. But in between, after she had told the disciples, here come Peter and John before, G before Jesus and had met Mary here. Here comes Peter and John, they're running to the tomb. Uh, John gets there first and he kind of looks in, but Peter, Peter gets there and he runs right down into the tomb there and to see what's going on. He considers what he sees in the empty tomb and he leaves. Not much more is said in the Gospel of John about that, just he leaves. So the experience of his faith of the, of the resurrection is he, he sees it, he's not sure quite what to think. And more belief is yet to come. He experienced the resurrection but John, who had gotten there first, now looks in, and it says in the scripture there in John 20 that the disciple whom Jesus loved, of course, is John, he saw, it says simply, he saw and believed. We might consider that sort of the model, the model for seeing and believing. For him, that was a great truth and belief already. And yet, faith for them in this early Easter time, this first Easter, was, a, was sort of an ongoing process too of understanding and, and the deepening of that faith that God had given to them. So those Mary, Peter, and John all have a different experience uh, in, in the experience of their faith with the resurrection of Christ, at the, right initially, initially. They were thinking it through. The faith was developing, was growing their understanding. Then we meet Thomas at the end of this chapter, and who we'll talk about some more here today. He said, unless I see it for myself, I won't believe. He would like some evidence. He would like, he'd like some evidence. 
And then after a while we see he sees Jesus and believes. And I would like to just say to you, seeing and believing, for every one of these people I've mentioned, seeing and believing is a little bit different for each one. And we might say it takes its own shape for them. And how true it is for all of us, we're all a little bit different. We all depend upon the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to have faith. Some need to see more, some need to see less, some need to sort of feel it more. But what I want to say to you that I find very interesting here in this chapter is that even though it's different for each one, never in this gospel story, in this lesson, do uh, we find any one of these four or more Mary, Peter, John, Thomas, never do we see any one of them being judged or somehow criticized for the lack of where they're at, but just simply encouraged onward in their life of faith. You know, they, they, were, they were looking at the resurrection of Christ here and trying to kind of figure it all out find that kind of a security in their life of faith. And I guess we should look at this today too and say, you know, how, how do you look at your faith? How secure do you feel in it? Well, if we look inside of ourselves, we might have a doubt here or there, a question something. We do like these early Christians did, we look at Jesus. We look at the Word of God, the truth of God. I remember once in Bible class, at my congregation here in town years, a few years back, I said, you know, so we, we have faith, we believe, and yet sometimes we doubt. I said, the opposite of faith is doubt. And that man said to me, and I, I, I learned something that day, he said, no, the opposite of faith is certainty. It's not uncommon for us sometimes to, to wonder about things, like the disciples like Mary or Peter or John or Tom. Not, not, it's not uncommon for us to wonder and to, to question, question what that would exactly be like. What is it we don't know yet and, and the mysteries of faith that go along with it? It's not uncommon. God understands our, our frailties, our shortcomings. He understood those disciples behind the locked doors, not that it was the way it should be, but it was the way it was. And we experience faith in our own ways too. And the experiences of life shape that faith. And John 20 speaks about the nature of our believing, seeing and believing at Easter time. And so here it is Easter time, and we give, continue at verse 19 where we see the disciples. And it says of them, first day of the week, the doors being locked because of fear of the Jews. The disciples behind, behind closed doors because of, because of unbelief. We might say, shame on them because they had all the advantages of all those years with Jesus and they should, they, we might say they should have listened to him. They should have listened to what he had to say. But well, we better not say that because someone might say that to us too, that we should have listened to him. There they are. They're, they're afraid because of unbelief. But how neat it is when we see these words that Jesus came and stood among them in their locked room. He appeared there and he said, Peace be with you, which was a normal Hebrew greeting. But on this day, it certainly carried much more. It carried, it carried a sense of compassion and acceptance. You know, if you would have been there with the disciples and Jesus would have appeared to you, what kind of a greeting might you have expected? Well, I think I might have expected like, where have you guys been? Why did you run out on me? Why didn't you believe what I had told you? But he understood the grace of God is wonderful for us and how we need it with a, and when we think about our, our own faith and if we think like my faith is so dependent upon, upon me, I think my faith is dependent upon the Holy Spirit and upon what Christ has done for me. 
Peace be with you. What a wonderful greeting. And as we look at this text, he said, he breathed on them, he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Oh, how they needed that as they were cowering there in fear. They needed the power of the Holy Spirit that was yet to be unleashed on them even in a stronger way in the weeks to come. We too need the power of the Holy Spirit when it comes to our faith life. As Thomas was here, he was not there that first time when Jesus appeared. And you know how it's said here in our text. He appeared, though, he, uh, Thomas was with them. He said, they said to him, we've seen the Lord. We've seen the Lord. And they were so excited about it. And they were still, I think, probably trying to figure it all out on their own. Because where were they? They were still behind locked doors. Because they, they had a real fear about death about the Jews uh, the, the coming to kill them. But he said to them, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will, I will what? Never believe. He, he could not believe what he could not see. How could that not be? These 10 that were gathered there, at least the 10, who were gathered there, who had seen Jesus. What did he think? There were 10 of them that were telling him the same thing. Did he think they were lying? Did he think that they had been deceived somehow? Or did he think that because of their despair that they were just wishing that it were true? Therefore he rejected the resurrection, even though there were 10 who saw Jesus alive and knew it was true. Sometimes I suppose we think too, if, if I could only see more, if I could only see God appear to me or Jesus or somebody come and tell me something about uh, life with Jesus in heaven, I'd believe better. Now, what did Jesus say? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. We are those people. He rejected it. Even though the ten had seen it and could tell them it was true, but interesting, I thought, how that relates to what we heard in the epistle lesson in 1 John 5, where it said there, I quote, we accept man's testimony. In other words, if uh, somebody, uh, you come out after worship here and there's somebody comes up and says, uh, don't, don't go down uh, 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 70 that way because there was an accident and it's all backed up down there. You'd probably believe that testimony of that individual. <clears throat> Back to the scripture, it says, we accept a person, a man's testimony, but God's testimony is even greater. <clears throat> greater because it is the testimony of God which he has given about his son. The testimony of God given to us in the resurrection of Christ, in the truth of the scripture that is brought into our hearts by the Holy Spirit into whom we have been baptized into God Wow, this testimony of God, the Spirit's work in our life is greater than any human testimony that somebody could give to us that we could see with our eyes. But here is Thomas, eight days later, and Jesus returns. Peace be with you, he says. And he says to Thomas, you want to you put your finger here? You see my hands? Do not disbelieve, but believe. And you notice Thomas needed no more. He said, my Lord and my God. What does Hebrews say? Hebrews says, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Thomas here had seen the risen Lord. He needed no more. Jesus said to us, people like us today, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. We believe the testimony of those who have gone before us, the testimony of God, the resurrection of Christ, that his work for us on Good Friday was accomplished successfully. He took our sins there, that we might be forgiven and have peace with God. The Bible says that he was delivered up for our transgressions and raised for our justification. We are the forgiven people of God because of the actions of Christ. This is the truth of God, more sure 
than we could ever know, but the Spirit compels us to believe that it is true. Faith is assurance of things hoped for. Blessed are those who have not seen, but yet believe. I think about Thomas when he said, my Lord and my God. What a wonderful expression of faith. But think about that. Even within that was a confession of sin too. It was saying, oh Lord, I am a sinful man. I'm not everything I, I ought to be. He didn't say this, but you can bet that this was going on within his soul was a recognition of his smallness, of his unworthiness, and how wonderful it was that God accepted him and forgave him. How about you two, as we look at these, this chapter in the scripture today? Our life too is formed by our experiences of life to a certain degree, it sure is. But it's formed by, our life is really formed by what we believe. What we believe about God and his love to us in Christ. Unlike Thomas, God has called us to believe in the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus simply through his word, simply through the witness of those who've gone before. And we read that in the scripture and the spirit convinces our soul that it's true and that we have been called to be God's people in our baptisms. We fear not. We have a faith that is as certain and as true as if we could have been there that day with the disciples and seen Jesus alive. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Thank God for the Holy Spirit who's work in our lives. And what does it say at the end of our reading? It says, these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ and the Son of God and by believing you have life in his name. We are a people who have life. We are a people who are see and believe at Easter time. What does it mean to have life in his name? It simply means that we know that God accepts us the way we are, just like he did those disciples who were huddled there in the upper room and they weren't everything they ought to be. Thomas, even though he'd heard the truth, yet couldn't believe very well. We are a people too who are dependent upon God's grace and mercy to us in Jesus Christ. Our faith is in him. We believe in what he has done for us. We have life in his name. We don't have to be afraid. The world only brings us fear. They had fear that they would be killed if they went out of that upper room. They had feared. We can live our lives with fear too as we look at what the world offers or the things that are scary to us. But we have life in Jesus' name when we put our confidence in him as the Spirit leads us to do that and all of his promises that we are forgiven, that we are loved, that God is with us now and that someday heaven awaits. We are an Easter people who see and believe and have life in Jesus' name. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Rise.